Hello, John Neal here, chalkboard artist, and it's a chilly night, as you can see, full moon, quite beautiful. And today I'm going to talk to you about some of the equipment that I use and show you uh, a board that I've got to do about a carvery. This is all a bit of a preview of my DVD, which is here, and you can obtain this from my website, which you can find at this address, www.jren hyphen images dot co dot uk thank you right let me just say a little bit more about the pens that I use here they are this red one this is uh, it's uh, Zig Posterman pen pens they're called and they're made by a Japanese firm called Kuritake and they're very clever in that they uh, have an ink in them which is water based so it's not smelly at all and yet when they're dry they become completely waterproof in fact I use the same ink on my van I have to say the, the red in particular fades in the sunlight after about six or seven weeks but I just keep redoing it but they're very very durable and they work on glass polished surfaces mirrors as well as on the boards that I use this big one here is five milli 15 millimeters across here and a smaller edge there so that as you can see, you can do a number of uh, marks, one that thick, that's the thinner one. You can even use the corner to get another angle as well. And being the shape that is squared, you can get some rather nice shapes emerge from it. Now the other pen that I use, of course, are the small ones. Uh, this one is not been used yet and it has these they arrive with this nib which is sort of edged at an angle which I hardly ever use so you can actually pull them out turn it round and you can get away with using it that way around and that's quite an interesting uh, pen edge to use when you first use it it's almost like an italic pen which is very nice but you can buy from uh, BHMA where I get the pens from some suppliers will supply these rounded nibs so they're rounded that end and the other end and you pop those in and you get a very consistent firm line the pens by the way need to be uh, stored horizontally and they mustn't get uh, frozen either and uh, you need to put the cap back on that's most important because they will dry out and then the, the, the felt nib is useless when it goes solid right here we have the um, uh, ruler that I use it's just one piece of wood it has some hardwood which I fortunately got hold of um, and I've just taken the top off and, and put it on one side only so it's sort of L shaped and this is exactly the same width of course as this this means that when I'm putting that up there to do borders I can easily go up here and create the same distance there and I find that very useful and it's imperative I would say to have something so you can constantly create a horizontal line and then create equal distances as well and I often have different size ones so there's a slightly smaller one and I can mark them uh, the lines uh, so that I can put different letter sizes down now it so happens that uh, the pencil that I use is uh, it's not a graphic pencil at all graphic uh, a graphite pencil should I say it's a, a colored pencil which I find better and you can make a, a fairly delicate line with this you can use a watercolor pencil which will wash off but I haven't always found this successful because the ink really needs to dry and harden before you wash over it uh, and uh, it's not easy to do that and wash the pencil off although it will rub off quite uh, easily but sometimes I, I, I have to confess I do leave the lines on because many a time for instance this carvery board I'm going to do it's going to be high up and the lines are going to be so faint they'll hardly be seen and if they are seen I think in some ways it shows that a person has been there and done the work right here's the bigger ruler again and you'll notice that I've painted the back of this one black it means I've got a surface I can try things out on if I need to and I find that quite useful sometimes just as I've done here and I just paint it black each time I get the roller out well, 
The board that I use is MDF, that's medium density fibre board and maybe in other parts of the world they call it other things but I looked on Wikipedia and they still call it medium density fibre board and this is the stuff. It produces a, 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 a nice smooth surface and this is the sort of roller that I use which when you buy it of course is white but I, I use a black uh, matte paint on here with a roller to create um, the surfaces that I do. See, and then it's really quite easy and in, in, I have to say the, it's an oil based paint this um, and it will take in one go straight on here there's no need necessarily to prime it maybe a second coat is often sometimes pretty good but uh, one coat of that and that dries in decent weather and in a bit of a breeze in just a few minutes uh, maybe half an hour and then you can start to work on it and finally this bit of board is in fact six mils thick and it's, it's fine for small pieces, um, maybe up to two foot square, but bigger than that I use uh, boards which are uh, nine mil thick. It comes in 12 mil as well, which uh, for bigger, heavier work you might want to use. It is durable outside for quite a while, but one of the drawbacks is once it gets damp, it does tend to swell and move a bit. But I have had some of this outside with some sign writing on with these inks, for about 18 months and it still looked not too bad at all. And there you have it. Uh, thanks for watching and here's to the next time. Bye.